Amanda, you know what time of year it is. Is it where my seasonal depression wears a fancy Christmas sweater? Uh, kinda, kinda. <laughs> um, you can actually wear your fancy Christmas sweater to the event. That is coming. You know what time of year it is. It is time for the annual Imperfect Strangers Holiday Party. Yay! We've been a podcast for so long that we have an annual event. <laughs> That's a thing. <laughs> yeah. um, this year our party falls on 12-12. How cute. We, you know, we love those numbers. Yes, we 12, do. 12 So if you're coming to that, you should know that there will be prizes this year. Yes, we have partnered with some of our very own stranger friends who have small business side hustles, and they have so generously offered to donate prizes, so we'll be raffling those off, and uh, for those of you who have never attended before and you're like, oh wow, a Zoom, it is so much fun. If you don't want to have your camera on, you can keep it off. If you want to show up in pajamas and bedhead, go for it. This is maybe the most looked forward to company holiday party all year dare i say it yeah yeah sometimes there's you know extracurricular activities like smoking <laughs> and drinking uh, <laughs> the chat is always lively everybody is always having a good time so we are so excited to host you guys again this year it is sunday december 12th at 8 p.m eastern and tickets are twenty dollars you can venmo or paypal for your ticket purchase and uh we will put all of the details into our instagram so go there and you know what i'll put them on the website too just in case you want to go look at it there as well Oh, wow. Old school website users? Yes, that's how old <laughs> our listening audience is. There's the type of people. Let me go Google it real quick. Um, yes, and you should know that each year uh, the proceeds that we make from the holiday party go right back into producing this podcast. So if you love it and you want to support it, you can do so by coming to our holiday party and celebrating it. I know that that sounds crazy, but you know what? We're going into 2022, and we're going to go into it with uh, yes. pride in the work that we do. Look at me. This is this is new Melissa. Pride in the work that we do. And also, you know, a big supportive group hug. So all of the prizes um, that you will be eligible to win with simply just the purchase of your ticket are from our OG listener friends who also have businesses to share and promote. So really, this is a big, yes. warm circle of hugging. So um, please come to the party. It's always fun. There are always, um, yeah, the chat is live. I actually <laughs> like to live in the chat, to be real with you. Um, <laughs> so definitely come. I, I, I mean, we spend a lot of time creating our backdrops. I wear an outfit. There's full drag going on. Absolutely. I'm wearing the velvet dress you gave me. That is going to be my party outfit this year. Ooh, remember that gift? Yes, that was a good one. That was a good one. That was a a well-sourced vintage piece, perfect for holiday parties or renaissance fair. Absolutely. See there? Because a friend knows (laughs) how to gift to a friend. Um... So come to our holiday party, 1212. There's a Zoom. Amanda will give you all the information because you know I'm terrible at that. And um, join us. It'll be fun. Yeah, I can't wait to see your shining faces. Melissa, I have to tell you about our newest stranger friend. Her name is Amber, and she came to us through Kareen. She's uh, Kareen's really good friend. And Amber has this company, um, she sells on Etsy and she's called the Moon Candle Co. And um, yeah, she has hand poured candles and handmade soaps, oils, bath teas. Uh, She has such a good vibe. And um, this week she sent us these goddess boxes and I know you haven't gotten yours yet, but it is beautiful. Wait, I'm getting another present. Another in the present. Mail? I know we have some of the kindest. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> this is so very exciting. Yes. So, um, so I opened this box yesterday, and it was in you know just like one of the standard paper mailers from the postal service, 
And as I cut it open, I was greeted with like this spicy orange, like cinnamony. It was this delightful scent and I hadn't even opened the actual package yet. And so inside uh, was um, the most beautiful candle. It smells like berries. It has dried flowers in it. And there's like a little quartz on top. So it's very witchy, very woo woo, <gasps> yes. And then there was this detailed um, note from Amber that talks about like how to set your rituals. So you want to cleanse your space, you know, you want to get in the right mindset, maybe do a little meditation and then, you know, whatever it is that you're looking to uh, manifest, you light your candle. And so essentially like you're calling in the five elements by burning this candle. And um, so there's very specific ones in there. She has each of them labeled. You are going to die when you see how they're packaged. Um, they are. Oh my gosh, you know how I feel about them. Uh, they're in like these little brown craft I envelopes. She's like written love, on them. I love, I love thoughtful packaging. It's like to the point where now I'm going to get this gift. And I know I'm supposed to light the candle. Just to smell the candle and enjoy them, but it's going to be too pretty, and I'm just going to have it to look at. <laughs> I know. I, like, put everything so gently back into the box. I tucked it back in, but there's um, crystals, there's dried fruits and dried flowers, there's a stick of Palo Santo so you can cleanse your space. It's, Ooh. I mean... When you open it, you will tell the love and care that Amber put into this box. It is so delightful. And I was so excited. I bought two straight, right, went right to Etsy. And I bought one for my mom and one for my sister to give to them for Christmas. So our stranger friends who attend our holiday party get the chance to win one of Amber's magical boxes. <gasps> oh, wow. This yes. is good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So guys, check out Amber's Instagram. You can find her at, and this is all together, no spaces, The Moon Candle Co. And you can visit her Etsy shop. It's etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash The Moon Candle Co. We'll link that in our Instagram bio so you can check that out. But if you are looking for a special candle or bath oils or salts, something really lovely to send to somebody you love this season, check Amber out for sure. Oh my gosh, this is going to be great for 2022 because 2022 is going to be all about setting these bomb ass intentions. Thank you, Amber. Thank you. I can't wait to get mine. <laughs> mine. Stranger friends, you might not know this about me, but I take a lot of pride in giving a good gift. I love giving gifts. I love finding that special thing that lets someone know that I see them or I'm thinking of them. And I have to tell you about a boutique that is owned by our very own stranger friend, Kato. She has started a boutique called Lola and Car. You can find her online at lolaandcar.com. That's L-O-L-A-A-N-D-C-A-R.com or on Instagram at Lola and Car. The amazing thing about this boutique is that it is so well thought out. Uh, you know, like when you shop somewhere, it's just like everything that they have is so scattered. It doesn't make sense as a shop. Like there's really no like, you know, thought out process here. At Lola and Carr, it is like so highly specific. It is so beautiful. Every single thing that's on that site, you can find jewelry, you can find housewares, you can even find really cute things for your pets. You can treat someone you love or treat yourself at Lola and Carr, lolaandcar.com. Thank you, Caro. Hello, stranger friends. I am so excited for you to hear today's episode. As you know, sometimes we bring on guests who then become part of our stranger family. And this week, we have a very special guest. As you know, I am a podcast junkie. I cannot get enough of a podcast. I love them. But I do have my certain core group of shows that I listen to. I don't miss an episode every single week. I look forward to the new content that they release. And this host, today's guest, is one of those shows. So this week, Melissa and I sit down with Roz Hernandez, also known as Roz Drez Velez, who is the host of a podcast called Ghosted by Roz Drez Velez. 
Roz is an actress. She's a comedian. She is a DIY maven. Her crafting skills are so good. And you know I love a DIY. Roz is a drag queen who hosts shows in LA. And most importantly, how I know her is as a podcaster. Roz's show explores the supernatural, the spooky, the paranormal. There is a little something for everyone, and I walk away from each episode knowing a little bit more about the, uh, the woo-woo. Roz has on celebrities and experts and everyday people every week on her show. You know when you listen to somebody who is like so passionate and excited and loves what it is that they're talking about? That is Ross. So, without further ado, Melissa and I are so excited to introduce you to our new stranger friend, Roz Hernandez. Melissa, I am literally shaking. I am so nervous. I am so excited because our guest today is one that will just, I know, fit right in with our stranger friend family. She is an LA-based comedian, an actress, a beloved drag queen, and a podcast host. You may know her as the bargain bin beauty and a spooky boo, but I know her as my podcast friend in my head. So please join me as I introduce you and say hello to Roz Dresfeles. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, Roz, this is so exciting because I don't I don't know if Amanda's briefed you on the premise of our podcast, which is we're two strangers getting to know each other. However, throughout the course of getting to know Amanda, if there's one thing I do know, is that Amanda loves you. So I'm Aww. like so excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like so excited to be a part of this conversation. It's like such a, uh, a, a an amazing like um, warm fuzzy. So thank you for joining us today. Oh my gosh, I'm honored. I love talking to strangers on the internet. Nothing can go <laughs> wrong there. <laughs> Nothing wrong with a little chat roulette. Let's see what happens. <laughs> oh my god, chat roulette. Okay, I always <laughs> compare Ouija boards because you know I talk about ghosts all the time. And when people talk to me about Ouija boards and they say, are they evil or whatever? I tr- This is my belief. I believe it's the same as chat roulette. Now, people don't remember chat roulette. Like 10 years ago, chat roulette was this thing where you would just like video. T- oh, my God. We've got a Ouija board. <laughs> Melissa's pulling out the Ouija board. Dark sided. I want my God. I want my family. <laughs> That's dark sided. Uh, oh. <laughs> but no, it's the same same concept where like you just basically just shuffle through strangers on the internet that you're just talking to, and sometimes they're good, and sometimes it's a penis. And I think that that's what a Ouija board can be. Sometimes you you could make a new friend, or you could run into a demon or a penis or I don't know what. Well, I'm glad that we're starting this conversation off right because um, some time ago, my eight-year-old, I have a little girl um, named Maja. She begged for a Ouija board. I don't know where she learned about it. And like, I thought nothing of it. So I Amazoned it. It says Hasbro right there on the box. So I wasn't tripping. I bought it. And then I mentioned it casually in podcast, you know, world to Amanda. And Amanda was like, oh, no, ma'am. What? what, what, what? So we ended up taking a poll to all our listeners. And all of our listeners were, were like, do not open that portal in your home and I have had this box my husband has hid it from me several different times I keep it in my closet right above like right under my platform heels that I never wear which what size shoe are you 11 <laughs> oh oh I was about to say I got some cute five and a halves in here that I never no, wear because I for am one not of my going toes <laughs> so I have held off on using the Ouija board because Amanda has forbidden it well, Aww. okay, so because you brought this up, this was in my little list of things to ask. 
Roz has a Ouija board story. Do you want to share, Roz, so you can, like, warn her? Please. Oh, my gosh. Uh, It's, um, I mean, you could definitely hear, like, the full details if you go to the first ever episode of my podcast. I really get into it there. But, yeah, basically, I owned a Ouija board that I bought from uh, a Goodwill and um, once I brought it home, weird stuff started happening around my house. And um, it got to the point where I was just kind of like fine with it. And it just became kind of like, you know, my little my little demon friend or I don't know what it was, <laughs> but it, it certainly had some kind of energy to it. And um, I just lived with it for a while. And then I eventually threw it in a dumpster and then we said goodbye <laughs> and it was over. <laughs> Oh, I wonder what's going on in that dumpster now. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I know. I'm sure that's a portal. All right. Well, Roz, you have your hands on a little bit of everything out there in L.A. Uh, Did you always (laughs) want to be an entertainer? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I... I, I've been reflecting so much this past year. Um, I think maybe I'm the only person in the world that has uh, <laughs> spent this past year at home reflecting. Just kidding. Um, I've been thinking a lot about my life. And um, when I was a kid, I was uh, <laughs> I would always um, like show up to dinner as um, uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. And I would like... <laughs> I would do the classic like towel wig with uh, sunglasses with no uh, no lenses, you know, popped out. And I would just be like, you know what? I'm Mrs. Doubtfire. Like, that's just what it's going to be. So you only address me as such. And uh, yeah, I mean, I was always playing dress up, always entertaining, always making people laugh. And I was actually, you know, what's so funny is last night I was thinking about the first time I was like, what was the first time I made a room full of people laugh? And I can't really remember. Well, I know when I was like a little kid, I used to um, I used to do observational stand up in my living room and the jokes weren't good, but um, (laughs) I think I just sold it. And so actually, you know what? This isn't a bad joke. This is one of my my first ones, I would say. What did what did the lamp say to the light bulb? You turn me on. I would say, like <laughs> stuff like that, and, and people would laugh, and I didn't really understand why, but um, you know, I would do that kind of a thing. But but then I was I was thinking about um, uh, the the story last night. I was thinking that I was in class and we were learning about I guess like metaphors and similes and stuff like that, and and they the teacher asked for an example and. I said she had curly hair and I said um, I raised my hand and I said your hair is like a bucket of curly fries and then the whole room (laughs) laughed and um, and she gave me a a tootsie roll and I remember thinking like oh my god you could like make people laugh and get things for it and so how do I do that (laughs) wow this is this is resonating Uh uh-huh the living room performances is that you too? Yeah, Roz is like the purple part in our Venn diagram. Do you see how she she's quoted dark sided shit? She's quoted demons. She yeah, has the Ouija I, board. I, <laughs> it's it's. I'm sitting here like, oh my gosh, this person must be a medium or something. Cause what's happening and why am I tingling? Why am I on this vibration? <laughs> um, no, I I I too was like an an entertainer child, but like it hadn't occurred to me that it could be a job, you know, until. Um, Someone told me that it could be after I was on a reality show. That's a whole other other dreadful story. But, Wait, um, that's right. You were on <laughs> Real World. I forgot about this. Okay, yes. That's so good. That's You were great. on Real World. <laughs> you, you were on the New Orleans one, right? I sure was. Okay, you mm-hmm. know something funny about that. I don't remember any Real Worlds but that one. And I know <gasps> I watched them. I know I watched them. And that's the only one I remember. And I remember... The, uh, as a kid, I went on a uh, a vacation to. Well, I mean, as a kid, I mean, whenever whenever it came out, I can't remember what year was that. Two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. Okay. So I was probably like uh, eight or nine or something. And I had no business. Oh, so watching definitely the not real supposed world. to be watching. <laughs> yep. Girl, the first movie I remember watching is The Exorcist. I, I <laughs> okay. my parents for some reason just that's how you end up like this. So <laughs> I uh, we went to New Orleans 
and we looked for the house. Now, I don't know, I, maybe it must have been on some kind of early internet at that time, or I don't know what, but we found the house, and somewhere there is a photograph of me in front of that house. Oh, we, I, we got to get the photo. Yes, the infamous Belfort Mansion. I, I, I find that most um, young people that watched that show were between 8 and 12, so I have a weird... <laughs> I have a weird place in the heart of like, you know, 36 to 45, um, yeah, it's... where they remember that time in their life where they watched Real World New Orleans because we were touching on a bunch of like, this was before the show became, you know, like hot tubs and, 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 and booze. We, we tried to have social issues and whatnot. So totally. like that little pocket of people definitely, you know, fucks with Melissa Beck. Yeah, there was, <laughs> when I was a kid, I was not... <clears throat> I wasn't interested in like the Disney Channel idea of what teenagers and adults are like. Like I was like, show me the real adults. I don't want to, you know, I'm not interested in this kid type shit. I was oh, I was all over MTV. You know who else I've had on my podcast from that time is um, uh, Dave Holmes. Do you know Dave oh, Holmes? Oh, yes. Be... Of course I know Dave Holmes, who, uh, the, the the VJ who went on to do amazing things and also became a writer. I have a very soft spot in my heart for Dave Holmes because he, too, has, like, a super niche, encyclopedic knowledge of pop culture. It's insane. Yeah. I'm yes. a huge fan of Dave Holmes. and um, Same. He, uh, just talking to him, it's like, no, I know you've done a bajillion things, but you don't understand how important early 2000s MTV was to someone like me. I yes. Remember Jesse and he oh took gosh. that spot oh, and it was Jesse. just like, he was so much better at the gig. And like, he, he just became like this normal fixture in our lives. I, I remember I was at a wedding one time with. Dave Holmes was there. I was on Long Island. I was like, how is this happening? You're so famous and amazing. <laughs> and then he was like, and you're you. I'm like, that's also true. So <laughs> it was just one of those weird encounters. But yeah, early aughts pop culture was like it. Yeah. 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 Uh, what a time. They don't Look make it this. like that anymore. They really don't. They really don't. And I mean, they're trying to. They're trying to do this thing where they're going, you know, they're walking down memory lanes. But it's so far gone and it's never going to be that special again. We're never going to look that terrible again. The eyebrows are never going to be that pointy and spermy and terrible. Well, the thing, spermy, the <laughs> thing about uh, any, anybody that was on TV before, like, I don't know, five years ago, were so much more famous. <laughs> like they were because there was less TV channels. There wasn't streaming. Yeah. And so yeah. same thing with music. It's like there wasn't streaming like you there wasn't YouTube. So it was like whatever was on the radio or was on MTV, everybody saw. So those people were I mean, you know, what I mean, you know, what I'm saying like it was I 100 percent. And then the weird thing is trying to reconcile that with. Now, if you go on TV and now if you're famous, there's a social media platform and there's this expectation that you go on to be an influencer, but you're like micro famous. You're famous in the little tiny niche bubble that you matter in. But back right. then when there was no yeah, like, you know, social media and you had to like, you know, go into a live journal to talk to other people who cared about the one random weird <laughs> thing you cared about. And there were hardly any reality shows, you know, there weren't yeah. a bajillion yeah. going on at once. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, Roz. Okay, we are in a conversation, <laughs> baby. Yeah. No, I see you. You are. Um, <laughs> you were instrumental to my youth, and I thank Aww. you. For well, thank you. Thank you. So, can I open this Ouija board or what? Come on. <laughs> get some demons in here. Let's get interesting. <laughs> yeah. Justin will die if he finds out that that's open. He will die. Yeah. My husband's going to say that's a no. And I'm going to be like, but Roz said. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ouija well, boards. Okay. I talk about these all the time. They're very popular conversation. I, um, you know, if you ever take uh, advice from somebody named Roz Dress for Less, that's a you problem, not me. But <laughs> I think that, uh, I think that Ouija boards aren't as bad as everyone thinks they are. It's just, it, I don't think it's a game. And I think that the problem is years and years of people treating it like it's a game, children, whatever. And then they end up with uh, things that creep them out happening as a result of playing this game, which does not happen when you play Monopoly or Candyland 
And so it's just generations of people thinking that and, you know, also movies and, you know, things like The Exorcist and various other movies um, that portray it as like you're going to get possessed by a demon. And and I don't know that that is true. I've talked to a lot of people. I actually had on my podcast a woman who identifies as a Ouijaologist. And she is uh, she's very involved in the Ouija community, which is uh, a thing. And uh, she's like, I've, you know, however many decades she's been doing Ouija boards, she's like, I've never had anything like that happen. It, it has nothing to do with that. So I think if people are concerned about that or they want to learn more, you could you could check her out or you could listen to when she was on my podcast. Uh, her name is Karen A. Dahlman. And she really like set the record straight for me on that. She was the first time. Okay, I think I'll that when I out. heard that episode, I told Melissa, I was like, but wait a minute. I just heard this guest on Raza's show. And she, like, collects them. She's part of a society. She said that they were okay. I was like, I still don't know if I believe it, but this lady (laughs) seems to be an expert. It might be okay. Yeah. No, all of that said, I don't want one in my house. I was actually (laughs) just this. Okay, so my idol is uh, Elvira, Cassandra Peterson. um, And this weekend, she was auctioning all of her stuff. Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, was auctioning all of her, like, costumes and personal belongings and all this stuff, and I was so excited. Uh, Long story short, I did not win anything. It all just started going way too expensive, and I'm very sad about it. But one of the things that they were auctioning was her uh, personal Ouija board, and it was vintage and cool, and I'm like, I just don't want one in my house, but also it's Elvira's, (laughs) and, and it didn't go for that expensive compared to other things. Uh, but still, nonetheless, I'm like, I can't do it. I, I don't want Aww. one in my house. But um, I love to tell people that they're not bad. I just don't want one myself. <laughs> Look at me, like, sliding it. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just push it off to the side. Throw some crystals on top of it. You should be yeah, okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. <laughs> So I thought this was another commonality because um, Melissa refers to herself as an amazing shut-in. I, too, am a homebody. And I was reading an interview um, with you that um, had you describing yourself when you started kind of dabbling in drag as a shut-in drag queen. Or a stay, I'm sorry, a stay-at-home drag queen, which I was like, <laughs> oh, my God. We we are like kindred here. So um, curious to know, like, where did Roz come from and when did you start, you know, pursuing drag full time? Um, Like introduce us to like who Roz is. What does she love? What does she do? Like, what is your jam? What makes you the happiest as Roz? Yeah, that's I I was I would always joke about stay at home drag queen, but that's become (laughs) A thing. <laughs> a lot of people. You were ahead of your time. You see, there. I was a stay-at-home journalist, and no one believed that was a thing. It's a thing, right? Uh, and now I'm a stay-at-home podcaster, and I love doing it at home. I, uh, yeah, the stay-at-home drag queen idea is there's a lot of. I, I actually, when people ask me for drag advice, which they don't do uh, ever, but if they were to ask me, <laughs> I would tell them. <laughs> <laughs> that you should I think it's good to to learn at home and then when you get to a point where you're like all right mama's ready then take it out to the world um or not whatever it's fine but that's how I did it and I'm very grateful for it because as soon as I left the house I was like all right I'm time to get paid and uh and so I was able to, I feel like I was decently polished uh, at that point. But um, d- drag started when I was like a, a late teenager and a lot of it was at home. And I've actually, uh, throughout the pandemic, as I've uh, gone through my life, I've kind of uh, realized that the early days for me were actually not drag it was more gender expression and um just learning how to do makeup i mean i was i was born male and at the time i was i was never in um a situation where i was wearing makeup every day so i was you know learning how to do makeup learning how to fix my hair or learning about wearing clothes from the women's section and all of that and then um 
and then I eventually started to get more into the drag scene and started to get more into the over the top side of it. And, and like when I started, I was like uh, walking down the street looking like I was I wasn't to me. OK, difference for me personally, I think everyone's different. But for me, a drag queen, the difference between that and I don't know cross dressing or I don't exploring your gender whatever I think that drag queen specifically is um over the top it's heightened it's not uh, daytime it's not uh, there's nothing normal about it you know it's not girl next door it's not uh normal's not a great well actually no I embrace that but it's not um it's just it's you know it's not just your hair it's giant hair it's not just a dress it's big old shoulders or rhinestones on everything or whatever so i i started to get into that later and um you would say you would say that it's like performance and it's it's art and it's like like camp i for me yes it's camp and for me it's always been I want you to know that I don't take myself seriously. Now, then again, I, I've realized over time that a lot of people have different ideas of what drag is. And I guess that, you know, that's a beautiful part of it. But for me, there's nothing uh, serious about it. I, I, there, a lot of drag queens take themselves very seriously, but I have never been interested in that. I want people to know right off the bat, okay, an average everyday person is not going to have a wig that is two feet tall. So I already see that person and I go, oh, that person's here to have a good time. That person is, you know, going to laugh with me. And, um, you know, it's taking things that we've seen and uh, heightening them and, and flipping them on their head. And that's always kind of what appealed to me about it. Now, that being said, I'm not really doing quote unquote drag quite as much. I've been you know, transitioning and I've learned that drag for me was a great way to explore my gender and to feel feminine and be in front of a crowd of people. Because, you know, being born male, I wasn't comfortable. I would try for so many years to perform as a male doing stand up or acting or doing all these things. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't connect with it. I couldn't figure out what that was. And then as I started doing drag, I was like, oh, this feels closer, but I still feel um, like I kind of want to be taken seriously, uh, which is funny because again, my definition of drag is something that isn't serious, but it was a great way to break that ice and to be comfortable uh, being called she and wearing makeup and whatever. And uh, then I've gotten to a point where I'm like, okay, I like the being called she. I like uh, feeling feminine, but I I want people to actually uh, hear what I'm saying and not think that um, everything is fake. You know, I, I, I'm like in a point in my life where I'm like, it's time to get real. Oh, no. You know, I would I would do stand up as a drag queen. And um, and I, I kind of felt like. And this is, is a part of it, I think, is probably just my own problem. But I think there is some truth to this that I would kind of feel like it would be like, OK, that was fun. We just had a drag queen. But now let's get to the real comedians. Uh, and I was kind of like, no, I am a real comedian. I just am dressed fake with, with fake hair and a fake nose drawn on and a fake butt and a <laughs> fake boobs and fake this. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, OK, I get it. People are thinking of me as like a gimmick or like I'm, um, you know, everything's fake. And, and that is part of the fun of drag. But it's just not what I'm interested in doing at this moment. There's a time and a place for it. But um I'm kind of interested in exploring uh, things in my life right now that are more real. They can still be fun and funny, but I want to, I was, I just want to get real. <laughs> so that's sort of been my drag journey. That's making perfect sense. I, I'm hearing that drag became exploration in a safe space. And then once you felt safe, you're like, oh, I can express myself this way, but I am also a comedian and I don't have to compartmentalize it in this kind of performance. I can just be a, quote, regular comedian without without all of the 
accessories and accoutrement. I hear it. It's also, uh, do I want to spend two hours getting ready to go do something, you know, like to go do stand up where most people are in jeans and a t-shirt? No. Yeah. It's like so much uh, like stupid stuff. Like I just have found, you know, like now I'm doing stand up and I present, I guess people could say like a woman, uh, but I, uh, I, there's just, I'm not wearing a big wig. I'm not, you know, it's like I would get into situations where I'm driving myself to the gig and I'm like, okay, I have to figure out a way to put this wig on. I did, there's no dressing room. <laughs> like that kind yeah. of stuff is ridiculous. Or like, okay, I guess I got to walk in with this big wig on a wig head so I can find a mirror to put this on. Like just so stupid. It's so dumb. And not, I mean, honestly, the, 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 the time that you have before it's your set time to do comedy, it's like so, already so uh, stressful and, and anxiety inducing. I can see how it's just like, can I just come and do the work as me, the Ugh. person I feel most comfortable being I know. without all of this stuff? Yeah, I know. And that being said, I do. I still love drag. I just... Um, it, it was the only way I was presenting myself to the world and it is exhausting and it's something that you can't do if you're not absolutely in love with it because it is just so much work and it costs so much money and people don't realize that and um, I just I, I'm doing it more for fun now I'm doing it a couple times a month I was doing it five to seven days a week before the <gasps> pandemic oh wow Oh, my gosh. So that's kind of how I got burnt out on it. <laughs> I mean, just the washing of the makeup off. Oh, like, yes. That's so much work. It's so much work. It's all. I have so much respect for drag queens. I hope that people realize what goes into it um, because it is it is a lot. And drag queens deserve they deserve the money. They deserve the praise. It is like it's just it's a lot. So you're like your your tamed down aesthetic. Like she seems like she's into mid century modern because you give me a very like fifties sixties vibe. Is this where we are going? Because the the pom pom earrings and like your little slicked bun is very cute. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I mean I love sixties. I love seventies. I um I've kind of, you know, I've been thinking a lot lately about, I've always been drawn to vintage uh, fashions and stuff, but there's also always kind of a part of me that thinks about um, uh, trans people in those times, you know, (laughs) didn't get opportunities, you know, to be performing on stages and that kind of a thing. And so I'm kind of, I've just been kind of thinking about it lately as I'm wearing these clothes from the 60s and thinking like it's it it feels special and I'm doing it for those people, you know, that that didn't get those opportunities to get their voices heard. And and I don't know, it's become something even deeper for me as I think about, um, you know, previous generations as I'm wearing these clothes or having these antiques around me or whatever. I don't know. I've been thinking deep lately. Um, uh, I'm also thinking that maybe it's the the shape and the form of those kinds of clothes because during that time frame, just like the earmarks and the definitions of femininity were so highly specific. Yeah. So maybe it's that. Yeah, I love the bright colors. I love... um... I love some of the fits of of oh God, just some of this, some of the stuff that makes people go, "Oh my God, that is so tacky." I'm like, I just find it so beautiful. I don't. There's something about me that I've always identified with things that people think are nasty, ugly. Like, ooh, who would want that? I'm like, me. I'll make it. <laughs> yeah. Make it pretty. That's how I feel about. Yes, that's how I feel about furniture. It has to be like kind of ugly but kind right. of pretty it has to be where someone that sees it they 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 don't know if they like it hmm they, but she bought it yeah i mean something that's for everyone that's not fun there's nothing interesting mm-hmm. about something that anybody can just like i i mean i don't know 
I, I like Oh, wow, Roz, you're anti-chug. I'm what? Anti-chug. <laughs> Do you know what the term chuggy means? Uh, what does that mean again? Isn't that like something that they call millennial <laughs> people or something? Or what is it? It's like very basic, very basic bitch, like loves a pumpkin spice latte, has a live, uh, laugh, okay. love sign in her house. Chevron. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. I mean, sometimes I ask myself, is that, is it me trying to be like not that or is it who I really am I don't know but I just I grew up around um, a very specific um, society community of people that were into very I don't know mainstream nothing wrong with it but you know sports and and stuff like that and I just personally didn't identify with that and I think that that a lot of times when you're somebody that feels like an outsider, you're given the the choice of do you say, OK, I'm an outsider, I'm weird and that's bad and I don't want to be that. I want to be like everyone else. Or you say I'm an outsider and I'm weird and that's what makes me special. And I've just been, you know, I've always kind of leaned into that. And I think there's been times in my life where I wanted my life to be easier. So I'm like... <sighs> okay, I'm just going to keep all that stuff for at home, whatever I like that other people don't like. And now I'm at a point where I'm like, I don't give a shit. I like weird shit. I'm weird. I like to talk about ghosts. I like to wear funky clothes. I'm just going to do it. You fit right in here. This is the perfect. I feel that. This is just a great big group hug that we're giving you right now, saying (laughs) welcome in because you are among our very favorite weirdos and nerds and people I think that by and large we found that this community is really people that kind of feel the same exact way it's been a really nice like virtual group hug of people coming together and being like oh my god I thought I was the only one oh strangers on the internet (laughs) (laughs) this chat roulette is working out (laughs) it is Speaking of ghosts, let's get in and talk about your podcast, Ghosted, by Roz Dresfiles. Um One of my oh favorite my podcasts. Oh my gosh, I just got Dresfiles. <laughs> Ross Dress for Less. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, Do you need a minute? <laughs> Ross Dress for Less bargain. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> Oh, I, okay, because I started one time on a whim, because, you know, when you stay in the house a lot, you have manic uh, bouts of creativity. I created a um, clothing line for staying in the house called 
Jacinda House. It's Jacinda, H A U S. And people were like, what does that mean? I was like, just in the house. And so Roz, dr- oh my God. That sounds like a stay at home <laughs> drag queen, Jacinda House. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, sorry, continue. I'm sorry. I just got here. Sorry, guys. You're okay. Wow, love it. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. So, um, you know, I know that you said that you were like into the paranormal for a long time. What inspired you to start a podcast? And, you know, how did you, I mean, Roz, you've had some huge names on your show. You've you've had Cassandra, you've had Avel- Elvira, you've had Jack Osborne, um, Andrea Perrin, wow. whose family, uh, their story was based um, or uh, was the foundation for the movie The Conjuring. Um, you have 175 episodes. I, it's quite an accomplishment. So why don't you walk us a little bit through kind of your process and uh, and for those who um, have not had the privilege to listen to Ghosted, give us a little taste of, you know, what they can expect if they listen to your show. Well, so th- uh, to go back to your question about like uh, how I started and, and that kind of a thing, uh, I had a podcast with my best friend, Sam Pancake, and we interviewed um, a lot of celebrities and fun people uh, every single week and it was it was fun but it is so much work and we would research different guests every week and it was just it was it was very fun I'm not going to complain about it at all but it was just a lot of work and I love podcasting so much of all the different mediums that I've been able to work in it's my favorite just because I love talking on the phone and I don't know. I just think it's great. I, and I love that it's not a performance, you know, everything else when you're in front of an audience or in front of a camera, you feel the need to perform. And with podcasting, it's just you're just having a conversation and, and I love it. And I love I love listening to them. And so when Sam and I stopped doing our podcast, I still wanted to do a podcast. But I was like, you know, it is so much work to book people and it's so much work to research whatever I choose to do a podcast on it has to be something that I never get sick of talking about and and I wanted it to be about a topic because our last podcast didn't really have a topic it was just let's talk about whoever we have on and uh and so I was thinking of different topics and I've always been really into the paranormal and I'm like, oh my god, this is perfect. I'll just, I'll do that. I, like it, most people have ghost stories, right? And um, it turns out, no, they don't. Uh, which, oh. it, and it's not as easy to book as I thought it would be. <laughs> really? Uh, well, if you think about it, it's hard just to book anybody. But then you say, yeah. okay, I have to book you, but also you have to have uh, ghost stories, and also they have to be good, or <laughs> people on the internet will get mad that the, that it's not good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's it's. It's a lot of work, but the good news is I love it and I never get sick of talking about it. And um, yeah, so I, I, in terms of like the process and getting people, it started out with people that I know and, and I, there's still, I still am kind of um, (laughs) constantly amazed by who I know. I I kind of forget sometimes who I know until I'm, especially now that I'm back out and about, I run into people and I'm like, oh, I know this person. Do you have a ghost story? I literally, I have lost all shame when it comes to asking people if they have ghost stories or if they're willing to be on my podcast. I mean, I think that people, I live so much by the idea of, no, who cares about no? You know, in this, <laughs> in, when it comes to stuff like this, uh, you know, someone says, no, okay, great, whatever. Like, you know, I live in LA. I get rejected every day. I can't, I, you know, <laughs> it's like, I don't care if I ask someone yeah. if they want to be on my show and they say no, big deal. So, I mean, what people don't see on the podcast is that I've probably had over a thousand people say no to me. <laughs> wow. I reach out to publicists. Um, I reach out to people I don't know. I I don't like doing this, but sometimes I reach out to friends that are friends with other people and be like, could you do me a favor and have your friend do this for me? Um, and I get no's a lot. But luckily, I uh, stay on top of it enough where I'm able to have somebody every single week and and I'm very picky about it. And um, 
and I record a lot that don't get released and um and and I'm proud of the ones that we do have that have been released and uh yeah yeah you you had um Pleasant Gaiman and I know Pleasant as Princess Farhana because once upon a time I was super into belly dancing and so she would make circuits around and she would have um like workshops so I took a Princess Farhana workshop and that was like the ultimate so when she was on the show I think that kind of maybe like solidified my love for you in the show in my little heart but I have a little list here of like You've had Nico Case, Karen Kilgara from My Favorite Murder, Busy Phillips, Margaret Cho, um, Cassandra Peterson, like I said, Elvira, uh, Peaches Christ, Kim Chi. Uh, do you have a favorite guest that you've had on since starting Ghosted? I mean, every time I, uh, I get asked this, it's they're, they're my babies. I couldn't choose. <laughs> These episodes are my babies. I, I, I mean, of course, having had my idol on, it's kind of hard to not say that one. Uh, yeah. But there's I and I'm also constantly like I just had one the other day that I was like, this is a good episode like I just got lucky with this story when I had on this actor Lou Taylor Pucci who's this, one of the yes. stars of the tv show physical um his story was so good I mean there's just so many that are good I I have a very teeny tiny list of ones that I'm like that one's good you know but <laughs> m- most of them I'm like I love these and I'm not afraid to say that they're you know they're good and um yeah, I don't know. I'm proud. I'm proud of them, and I'm I'm fortunate because obviously, it's not just me. It's uh, it's the guest that's coming with the goods, and um, and I have a great team of people that help me with the show, uh, producing it at uh, Starburns Audio, and uh, yeah, I, I like them all. I really do. You've had some psychic mediums. Have you ever had anybody on where you were just like? I don't believe this story. This there's this just seems like too fantastical. Have you ever had those situations where like you've had to just dump an episode because you thought the person was not being truthful or fully transparent? I have, but I've gotten better nowadays. I as much as I can, I try to pre-interview just a little bit with people and I say can you can you give me like just an idea of like what we would be talking about like what is your story because I have I've had people on before that will tell me like I didn't do that and then when we start doing it they tell me their story and it's like could it be that that wasn't a ghost and it was this and then they're like oh yeah, actually, maybe it was that. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, well. <laughs> so stuff like that. You know, like I have on listeners um, every month and I always tell them to send me little bullet points of what their stories would be. And, and I mainly do that, first of all, so that they don't, because sometimes people will send me like long pages of stuff, which I don't always have time to read. And I don't want them to put, I mean, they're doing me such a favor of being on. I don't want them to, to write all that stuff. But um, I'm I'm always just kind of like give me an idea and and I people will um, also when I do those episodes I usually have on like three or four guests um, that are listeners and uh, I go okay this person has like a sleep paralysis story this person has an alien story like I want to like kind of mix and match what I get per episode uh, just to have variety but um, yeah I find that the pre interview it has been key. Because it's also very awkward when you record with someone and then it never comes out. (laughs) They're like, hey, girl, where's that episode? Where's that episode I spent an hour with you? It's like, oh, yeah, sorry. Um, What can we expect from Ghosted going into 2022? Do you have any big plans or are you just kind of like fly by the seat of your pants? I do have big plans. Um, not all of them I can reveal at this time, mm. but um, there's lots of great, exciting things in the works. Um, in terms of guests on the show, I've already booked everybody for this month. Um, I don't like to say who's going to be on until I've recorded because also people can cancel and then I'm like yeah. see this is all the shit that I've learned from like 
three years of doing this because um, I've made that mistake in, before where I say someone's going to be on and then they can't be on and then people are like, wait, where are they? Uh, <laughs> so I do have recorded um, a winner of RuPaul's Drag Race. I have, um, I'm supposed to record this week with some, uh, a whole crew of uh, TV paranormal investigators. Uh, so hoping that works out just fine. Uh, so that'd be, I think that's my first time ever having three people on at once. Um, I am in talks with a very, very famous uh, TV actor, um, but we haven't recorded it yet. So yeah, I mean, just constantly out there looking for new people. Look at you. It's a full-time job for me. I, I just, I love it. It's fun. Well, well I was going to say, too, you you sound like you love your job. And, like, yeah. I, is, isn't that, like, the ultimate goal? You know, like, Amanda and I stumbled upon podcasting, and it was, like, a fun thing we did. And then, like, one day we were sitting in our Slack, like, wait a second, I think this is a job. This is kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always been someone where I'm like, okay, there's something that I, because I had, uh, day jobs and stuff in my early 20s and I just I personally don't feel that I am it's I'm good for that like I I just I don't know if it's some something about my personality or something undiagnosed or I don't know but I just am not good at at like clocking in and doing things <laughs> it's just I'm bad I'm bad at it <laughs> so I'm like how can I serve the world best and it has to be doing you know finding the things that I love and figuring out how to make them a job <laughs> so um that being said making drag my job it got a little bit to a point where I was kind of um uh, doing doing certain jobs uh, for money and not for the fun of it anymore or you know just so it's I think it's always good to keep an eye on that but also I you know I remind myself like okay I've like I've had jobs in the past that they're jobs everybody has to have a job like whatever it's not always gonna be fun there's frustration you got bills That's, yeah, it's like, whatever. Jobs aren't always fun, and they're not. I mean, especially being here in Hollywood. It's like, it seems like it's all fun, but again, you get rejected 24-7. <laughs> it's, it's such a specific thing where you're, you, have to, you have to learn how to, um, to keep going and not give up. And um, especially, like, doing drag, it's, there's also... Um, you have to spend a lot of money to make money and you know it's not it's not all sunshine and roses how, how much does a size 11 high heel cost <laughs> i'm serious because wendy williams always talked about it on her show back in the day cuz she has she has i think i i don't remember what size foot but there's a special website that she would go to and like her shoe collection was very expensive so when you said spend money i was like yeah i bet well, yeah, I mean, not every company has up to 11, but I am the bargain bin beauty Roz Dresfalas. So when I say <laughs> I spend a lot of money, I don't nearly spend as much money as a lot of drag queens. But uh, yeah, I mean, I also love if I find a good shoe, first of all, I'll buy multiple of them. And yep. I really am into leather paint, which works on not even just leather. I'm a little bit animal rightsy, and I don't really buy brand new leather, but um, pleather it works on too. And so I just like get the same shoe and just like paint it different colors, paint designs on it, put rhinestones on one. Like I don't know, just make it different, but it's still the same shoe. Yeah, you're so crafty. Oh. I've seen like your little felt projects and your little ghost jacket. I mean, you are very handy. Yeah, I like doing that stuff. I like to keep my hands busy. Well, at the end of every show, you say, um, I love you all, both living and dead, but if I didn't ask you to haunt me, don't haunt me. So let's pretend, Roz, that you are a ghost. Okay. Who are you haunting? Who, so who am I uh, unconsensually s stalking? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you! 
you guys. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Who am I haunting? I mean, I guess I would look at it more so where I think would be more. Okay. For me, uh, you know, because I think typically speaking, a ghost is believed to haunt a place as opposed to like following somebody around. I mean, yeah, people have stories like that, but typically, traditionally, old school ghosts will be stuck in a place. And so I don't know. I think I would ghosts tend to haunt theaters and uh, performance venues and that sort of a thing. And, and I think I would like to be somewhere where you get entertained all the time. That sounds fun. That works. Okay, so you are haunting a theater and there are people coming in and out and you want to make yourself known and sometimes ghosts will like have scents associated with them. So you're a ghost, you've got people around, you want them to know that you're there. What is the scent that they smell? Ooh. Mm. Let's see here. Well, I always like the smell of, I don't know if you know this, perfume um it's called angel by mugler and it's very uh, people love to tell me that it smells like the 90s but it's very like (laughs) i don't know i just love it It, to me it's what drag queens smell like and uh i love to wear it when i do drag stuff so i would probably choose that when I think of the 90s, I smell exclamation. You remember that perfume? Oh, my God. CK1, that's what I think of. Uh, when I think of the early 2000s, I think of um, uh, Axe deodorant or like like all of that <laughs> kind of like um, like mass marketed, like just like such fake smelling like. Sunflowers. Yeah, the green bottle from ba- the green bottle from um, Bath and Body Works. Pair of Glace, and it was like G L A I. <laughs> yes. And then the C with a little thing under it. Yeah. That. Lots of Bath and Body Works. Ooh, it was terrible, and I loved it. Abercrombie. All. F- I would like to layer the vanilla on top. What was the Abercrombie <laughs> Fierce? I think Woods. was the male. Uh, oh my god. Cologne that everybody loved that. Like. Hmm. <clears throat> Genite, I still use that because it's just you know, <laughs> the smell makes me happy. Mm-hmm. It's three a.m. and you are blaring your ghosty song on the radio. What is the song that you randomly pull up on the radio? <sighs> um. Well, let's see here. I have a couple of like pump up songs that I play uh, to get in the mood and. I would say Family Affair by Mary J. Blige. I play a lot. Um, Push It by Salt and Peppa. I play a lot. Um, I think those would be fun. I think those are kind of like party songs that get everybody in the mood. So you're like a party ghost. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, so many ghosts tend to be sad, and I get it. I think the whole idea of a ghost is kind of sad, but... I like the ghosts that are like in denial of the sadness and they're just having a good time. (laughs) They're like, I'm not dead. You're crazy. Like that kind of (laughs) ghost. That's who I would be. Well, on that note, you appear as a full body apparition. What are you wearing in your ghost body? Oh, my God. Probably something with no pants on because that's (laughs) very my aesthetic, that Donald Duck kind of look um i got the <laughs> legs so show them uh so yeah i would probably wear i love to wear i love to wear things that make me look like a lollipop like big on the top with just like my skinny little toothpick legs hanging yes. out at the bottom um so yeah i'd probably wear some kind of poncho with no pants on or something like that <laughs> love it All right. Well, Roz, you are a joy. This is seriously like bucket list. Check it off. If uh, our listeners want to find you, tell us all of the places where we can find Roz. Well, 
You can find me at my podcast. It's probably the best place to find me because I'm not great at other social medias. But uh, the podcast is called Ghosted by Roz Dresfiles. And it's everywhere you get podcasts every Thursday. And I have on celebrities, experts, and everyday people. And there's always new episodes. And uh, if you're new to it, it's kind of great because you could go back and you could listen to what would feel like an unlimited amount. There's so many hours. They're all still posted. I have not taken them down yet. They're all up there. So uh, binge away. And if you wanted to follow me on Instagram, it's Roz Hernandez. Excellent. And you have a Patreon, too. I do have a Patreon. Every week I do videos of just various things around town or fun things I'm up to or arts and crafts projects or ooh, let's go find some haunted places stuff like that I do a one video a week and I also do bonus clips from every episode uh on there and sometimes I do just full-length episodes just for fun and just throw them up there as well well you are very busy Roz you are so busy and I'm so like when you responded back so quick to my DM, Melissa was out of town and I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. She said, yes, we get to have Roz on the show. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, thanks for having me. So tickled. Thank you so much. Make sure that you check out Roz Dresfiles with Ghosted anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye. Oh, bye. bye. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Imperfect Strangers Podcast featuring the lovely and multi-talented Roz Hernandez. If you'd like to check out her podcast, Ghosted, you can find that anywhere you listen to podcasts just like this one. Anywhere you listen to podcasts. Again, that's Roz Hernandez on Instagram. And Ghosted with Roz Hernandez uh, is a great listen, especially because, you know what? She said it's okay for me to open my Ouija board, and I just might. I mean, I'm not gonna, but I really might still after all this time. But anyway, let's talk about the real thing we need to talk about now, which is are you coming to our holiday party? 12, 12, 8 p.m. Tickets are still available. In fact, there are comp tickets floating around. Hit up our Instagram for details on that. It's Instagram dot com slash imperfect strangers underscore podcast uh, if you want to follow us on twitter it's imperfect strangers we have a website uh, imperfect strangers podcast dot com there you can link up to our online store which has our beautiful season four merch um, as always thank you so much for being our stranger friend for listening week to week and for your continued support uh have a great weekend and we will see you back here on monday for the monday night live thanks bye